Today I have for Teardown this Symphonics EX320, which is part of their line of enterprise filtering devices. These things do things like uh, blocking certain websites. They do things like prioritizing traffic and all sorts of other enterprise related things. This particular unit is on the lower end of things. It, I believe it only supports two megabit connections. It has so many connectors on the front that I figured this was gonna be a custom board and probably pretty useless. But it turns out that on the inside, it is a standard consumer motherboard. This is a Core 2 Duo, the E5200, eight gigs of RAM. It's a standard, I believe it's an Asus board, 500 gig hard drive, pretty much worth what I paid for the whole unit. I think I paid about $20, including shipping for this. One U power supply, nothing special here. And this is a custom board that they've put in to give all the front panel connectors. And it turns out it just connects with a single PCI Express slot. So this whole module just plugs in and lets them use a standard off-the-shelf motherboard which is pretty good for anyone trying to reuse this because you get a standard off-the-shelf motherboard the hard drives a standard Seagate serial ATA 500 gig it's a constellation class so I believe that's their enterprise stuff and they obviously make a 250 and a one terabyte version, but this is the 500. It has the operating system on it. Although this thing does filtering and stuff, it doesn't seem to cache anything. I wasn't able to find anything on the drive in terms of image files, that sort of thing. The system has a password on it. It's not the default password. So yeah, you can control a lot of it from the menu using the, uh, the little LCD controls, you can change the IP address. It goes through a standard boot process where it checks the file system and that sort of thing. But once it's started up, you can go through the menus and set IPs and stuff like that. Setting the IP address was successful for me, but the catch is that the only open port is a SSH port and I don't know the login for this particular system. So can't really do anything with that. Power supply has an annoying sticker over it, but I think this is probably just a Sparkle Power 250 watt unit, give or take. I did notice that the first time I used this, it got rather hot, not hot, hot, but warm pretty quickly. And this thing doesn't draw much power, only around 70 watts under load. So I'm thinking that the fan was stuck, but now I can feel airflow on it when it's running. So I think it was probably just seized up. The motherboard is obviously not installed in a way where you can access any of the ports, which is fine because you just need the USB port and network connections on the front, which are handled by the custom card. Internally, they also use a serial port connection to the board. I'm not sure how much actually goes through there. It might just be interfacing with the LCD. Who knows, it could be doing uh, like command and control stuff with it. Because the ports don't line up with anything on the back panel, the back panel simply has two 40 millimeter fans. These are made by Top Motor, which is Dynatron and they're quite loud and they're uh, connected using this rather convoluted series of adapters and wire splices and stuff to get them running off a single fan header. They even put a little scotch lock connector over the loose cable just to cap it off, which again is a little excessive. I think I've shown these in a previous video, but scotch lock connectors from 3M are actually pretty cool. They use a single metal plate that pierces two wires coming in through here and not only does it pierce the connection, but when you squeeze the connector, it actually, uh, you may not see it too well, but it forces out some uh, soft silicone goop, which is very sticky and it'll cover the edges of the wire, making this a waterproof connection. I don't know how waterproof it is. It might just be like water resistant, but it is pretty cool that it's all just one motion. You crimp it essentially and it connects the two wires and makes it waterproof so it's a pretty cool connector they're fairly cheap on amazon if you want some the motherboard i believe is just a standard asus motherboard uh, i'll have to take the top off to uh, or take this board out to double check that i checked it earlier i just can't remember what it was exactly it has a low profile Dynatron fan, aka top motor. This thing is extremely loud as it's a blower fan, but you can at least control it with PWM. And by default, they of course run it at full speed because it's an enterprise hardware thing and it's meant to be in a loud server room. But when you slow it down, it's actually not too bad and it's quite low profile, albeit a little dusty. This is an LGA 775 motherboard. Like I said earlier, it's an E5200 CPU, which is an older model, dual core, 
2.5 gigahertz with a 800 megahertz front side bus. Pretty low power, but hey, it, it supports enough stuff that you can get by with it if you want it as a simple server. The only catch is it does not support AES-NI. Officially, that won't be supported when the new versions of PFSense come out, that sort of thing. Pretty much anytime you're using an encrypted drive or a VPN that's encrypted, you're gonna want AES-NI. And unfortunately, if I recall, there are zero processors that actually support AES-NI in the 775 socket. That kind of limits you with what you can do with this thing. And if you're going to replace the motherboard, then you run into issues of, well, what motherboards fit in this case? You can't access any of the rear ports. So repurposing this thing, I did pop in a USB stick with FreeNAS on it and it booted it successfully. It was able to see five Ethernet ports. So it saw, saw all four on the front and the internal one. It does seem to work properly as just a regular system. You are kind of limited in what you can do with a non-AES-NI motherboard, although it'll run pretty much anything just fine. It's just that you're going to be limiting yourself with what version you can use at some point. Nice attention to detail. They put in some nice wire ties to keep the memory from opening up while it's uh, in transit. It's actually hot glued on one end as well. So yeah, that ain't going anywhere during transit. These are two four gig sticks of DDR2 because there's eight gigs total on this unit. And uh, yeah, they're just PC6400. They're not ECC or anything, obviously, because this doesn't support ECC as it is a standard consumer motherboard. The only thing of interest on the front panel are these little membrane switches and a little clear plastic window to the LCD. You have to take this out to get the custom board out. There's a nice little plastic shroud to just direct some of the airflow. I did notice that the chipset on this motherboard gets extremely hot if you don't have a fan on it. When this thing starts up, the front Ethernet jacks do this nice little color pattern. This is the LCD module. I have to say, I really like the design of this thing. It uses a very sturdy metal chassis, which is attached to the board, and it has a little RS-232 port. This is the membrane keyboard connector, or button panel, power connector from a standard floppy size connector. It just uses a standard LCD on the front, which most of these custom ones do from Matrix Orbital or Cyberfont. They both use just standard LCD modules for the most part, and it's really the backpack that contains the logic and anything special. This particular one uses a pick, and from what I can tell, it's from EZIO. I'm not positive on that. I couldn't find much information. Apparently there's an LCD proc driver for this, but I don't really have any need for this case, so I'm not gonna test that. This is this very nice through hole pin header. And it's just got a little four megahertz clock crystal on it. Come on, Symphonics. You only put one screw in this serial port connector. Someone could have died. I was mistaken that FreeNAS detected this onboard gigabit port. It doesn't. Probably just because it's a Realtek chip and, you know, Realtek support under FreeBSD is iffy at best. This is the P5G41-MLX2 slash GB motherboard from Asus. The only difference between it and the regular LX2 is that this comes with gigabit ethernet. It's an MATX board, as you can tell by the fact that it's not particularly large. It's quite good as something that you'd use to test hardware on you know, when, you, when you're dealing with vintage hardware, because it's got serial ports, it's got serial ATA, IDE, PCI, PCI Express. So you get a wide range of different connections. Uh, there's actually space for a floppy connector, although they didn't populate it. Really the only problem with this motherboard in terms of reusing it for something is that it's riddled with KZG caps. So good luck on that lasting more than a month. Although, who knows? This thing could have been running as a server for five years and all these caps are still good, although I find that really hard to believe. It does work, it's just that KZG caps are not exactly reliable. This is the custom PCB they used. It looks pretty straightforward. It's connected with this PCI Express connection, which is a vertically oriented PCB. It appears as five Intel Ethernet ports. Got all these relays for redundancy, so it just drops out of the network if this thing fails in some way. There's a PLX chip that'll act as a PCI splitter to connect all of the different Ethernet devices. 
I also have a Xilinx chip here. This is probably handling the fallover and it'll handle all the little things that it has to do, probably like the LCD. Down here, there's spots for a bunch of large BGA packages because I do know they offer models up to one gigabit. So they're probably using fiber on some of them. And it gets power from a standard floppy disk power connector, which I do find a little weird because it doesn't get from the PCI Express port, but it might have something to do with if the motherboard fails to start up. They probably just want direct power from the power supply if there's something wrong with the motherboard. It looks like there's space for possibly an EEPROM of some type. This over here is actually a system on a chip power supply, just acting as a standard DC to DC converter to just power all of this stuff. The ports on the front are all the ethernet ports, and then they also have a USB host and device connector and a reset switch. Excel outsourcing. 2010, the DC3000. So this is obviously connecting to the CPLD and the front panel, and this one's just probably going straight to the LCD over here, which is gonna be a serial connection, but there's probably a converter in here somewhere. I know I haven't been uploading a lot of videos lately. I've actually been working on a lot of stuff recently. I'm building a new system that I'll do like some kind of build vlog style video on, a very high-end, hardline liquid cooled uh, 7980 xe 128 gigs of ram nvidia 2080 ti water cooled the uh evga for the win edition it's gonna be a nice upgrade from my haswell chip and i'm also going to be building a computer for my dad at some point he's going to get a pc so i'm going to put that together and i'll probably make a short video for that and i also did a custom loop on my server. I replaced the single socket motherboard with a dual socket Xeon with dual 2697 V2s. So my server now has 48 threads, 24 cores, and it's pretty cool. So I'm learning virtualization with that. I'm gonna virtualize FreeNAS and another VM for Plex and another VM for Pi-hole. And I'll probably eventually move my PFSense router over to that. In the meantime, I installed Windows on it and ran Cinebench just to see how much faster it was than my current computer, at least in this very heavily multi-threaded task. And it absolutely annihilates my computer. So that's where I've been. And also, of course, my cat was uh, had some surgery last week. He had some bumps taken off him. He's fine. Uh, yeah, I took up my weekend, so. But I hope to get stuff done someday, soon. Oh, hi, Neo. What's up? What's up, buddy? What do you got in your fur? Neo just had surgery a week ago, as you can tell by his uh, missing patches of fur. Hey, buddy, what's up? <laughs> Thank you. All right, I'll see you later. I've shown these in a previous video, but one of those days.